I was recently asked to come and uh, give an overview of CAD and CAM for a local school program. It's a build-a-plane program uh, where they're working through the process of putting together an RV-10. And on a recent field trip, they went down and saw a UMC 500 uh, making some parts. And they asked if I could give a bit of an overview of CAD and CAM for them. And from past experience, I've ended up learning that uh, teaching a student is very similar to teaching an adult. Learning is learning and learning these new tools is is the same. Uh, what might change is a little bit of the background, but the core concepts are the same. So I thought I'd take the time to just record the presentation for the students that aren't going to be there today. My, my son's actually one of them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and record the presentation and hopefully it's valuable for others as well. Uh, what I'll end up doing is just walking through explaining CAD and CAM. We'll put a little bit more of a bias on the presentation on CAM because uh, the inspiration really was seeing how to get one of these UMC 500s moving. But I hope it shows uh, some of the key concepts uh, in, in CAD CAM as, a, as I work through it. I have no intention to spend a lot of time editing the video, so uh, my apologies in advance, but, it, but again, I hope it is useful. So at its core, CAD is computer-aided design. Computer design is where we create our 3D geometry, and the output is largely uh, drawings or uh, human readable information. Now, CAM, it takes 3D models as an input, and its output is G code or information that machines read. So, both of these things are creating data for something uh, downstream. CAD, we're creating 3D models that we can visualize and consume as, as humans. CAM, computer aided manufacturing, takes this 3D data, this rich information, and creates uh, instructions that are readable by a CNC machine. And here we're showing um, the process of doing CAD on the left and the process of doing CAM on the right. When we think of Fusion 360, and that's the tool we're going to use, there's effectively two clients a, a thicker client, an authoring tool that runs on Mac and Windows, and students can access that in a browser as well and a thinner viewing client that runs in a browser anywhere. Obviously, you can have your browsers on a desktop too, but the thinner viewing client is really where you can see the related data, how those things connect, view and comment and that sort of thing. So as we walk through the presentation, I'll be showing CAD and CAM, and I'll also be showing how we author data and view data. The part I've chosen to use is, is one of the parts actually on this uh, RV, uh, RV10, uh, a little component made up some of the dimensions for it, you'll see later, uh, but a component that largely is inspired by one of the components on the plane. Uh, and it turned out to have a lot of uh, interesting teachable moments as I worked through it once already. This will be the second time through it, and hopefully I don't forget some of the things I wanted to say, um, but we're gonna walk through this a second time and just show how to, how to draw it. So I've got a drawing here and we're gonna launch Fusion and, and we'll get into it. Let's go. Okay, so we have Fusion open. In the graphics area here, I can see the 3D model of my finished component that, that we want to manufacture. Before I go through the process of drawing it, I think it'd be a good idea, though, to walk you through sort of some of the fundamental aspects of Fusion. I'm not going to get too far into it. So I like to say you don't know how to make a frying pan to learn how to cook an egg, but it is important to kind of see what tools we're going to use through the process of, of cooking that egg. So, so let's walk through this. Uh, and, and see some, some key concepts. I think the first thing that's important to understand with Fusion is it takes uh, a, a mechanism to capture the recipe of your document. We call that the timeline, and that's down at the bottom of our document. I can hit play on that timeline, and it's going to walk me through a history of how I made this component uh, just an hour ago before we started recording here. So that timeline captures a history of the document, and what we'll find as we go through things, that history can be replayed and changed uh, earlier in time, and, and things will propagate through. So this is an example of a single component. Uh, sometimes we create assemblies. So assemblies are an example of when we bring multiple components together, and now we're going to have a relationship of those components to each other. So in this case, I've taken multiple components and created an assembly. With Fusion, it's unique. It uses a single document type in many different ways, just like you would use Microsoft Word maybe to uh, write a single page or a multi-page essay or a complete book. The single tool, Fusion, uh, can be used to create single part documents or assembly documents. So that's a part and an assembly. The next piece we're going to show you is a drawing. 
a drawing now is a 2D representation of that 3D geometry. So in this case, I've created a drawing with some specific dimensions so I can communicate uh, downstream. And I showed you earlier that more complicated drawing of uh, many parts that, that put together that RV. This is a, a detailed drawing of a, of a single component. That's a drawing. So we've got parts, we've got assemblies, we've got drawings. And the last thing we're gonna look at is, is manufacturing documents. Again, same generic document, but now I'm using it for the purpose of manufacturing. And I've put my part in this document. I also have assembled in my vise to see how I'm gonna hold it. I've drawn some extra stock. And here, we're now actually gonna switch from my design workspace into my manufacturing workspace. And we'll see we have the additional ability to start uh, seeing our entire machine and, and seeing the tool paths that we're going to use to manufacture that part. So in CAM, now we're starting to create tool paths and instructions uh, for a machine. So that was, uh, again, if we go all the way back, we've got a single part. Uh, that part is assembled together, uh, and then we're gonna start creating our tool paths. So this is inside the authoring, uh, authoring client, and we're gonna, we're gonna make changes in here. Maybe I'll show you a quick change to show how all this history works. So I showed you that there's a timeline here, and this is important because when we when we realize that how we do something, the recipe of how you do it can be changed, it really gets you to think about how you go about uh, modeling. So I'm gonna go all the way back in time of this document. I started with a sketch, and we're gonna change the width of this uh, to from 1.875, let's make that two inches. So you saw the sketch get a little bit bigger, and this whole document, um, just changed. Maybe I'm going to make a change to this uh, this diameter here too. It might be a little more obvious. So we're changing the size of that uh, hole as well. Those two changes. I can save my document. So now I have uh, updated this document. When I go to the downstream documents that are consuming it, they're going to end up being dirty. So in this case, my drawing, we can see, oh, there's been a change. I can regenerate that and the drawing will now reflect the new dimensions. I don't have to change anything. That recipe replayed, but updated the values on the drawing. And if I go into my manufacturing document, we'll also see that we've, we've got the geometry change here. So I'll do an update, and it's going to change the, the geometry that's coming in. If I go to my tool paths, all of these tool paths have become dirty, and I can recalculate all of these tool paths and they're automatically gonna update based on the new part geometry. So that's that's really important when we, when we think about using a tool we call it a parametric CAD CAM tool. That means that the recipe, how we go about defining things is captured and that allows us to uh, go back in time, uh, kind of think of it back to the future. We can go back and change things and it'll update uh, the future. It's a very powerful way uh, to do engineering because you start thinking about what's my intent and what if you change your mind? Well, what trickle on effects have uh, throughout the product? It's, it's a very critical and a very um, core concept to understand when you're using a tool like Fusion 360. So that's that's the authoring tool. I'm gonna to give you a quick overview of the data management tool. I think, it's, I think it'll be helpful. We don't need to go too, too far into it, um, but I'm just gonna quickly open up um, the web environment and see kind of some of what's what's possible there, because it's gonna show us the same information uh, from that front. So to access the, the web experience, the experience for viewing the data, over here on this left-hand side, the data panel, uh, and that's just open and closed by expanding that, uh, that little grid icon there. We can go to our, our component that we currently have open, that's the manufacturing component, and just say open details in web. When we open the details in web, and I've got dual monitors, so it popped up on the other side, we can now see um, this document. We can see where it's used or wh what it uses. So it's pulling in the initial design. It's pulling in a model of the assembly. It's pulling in a model of the vise. And it's also used in an NC program because we're going to, at the end of the day, we're going to output uh, some G code. What's super interesting here is we can, we can actually look at uh, this in, in a web browser so you can share that in a rich way uh, and even do things like look at uh, individual tool paths on, the, um, on this component. So 
uh, some of those tool pads that we're going to see later that manufacture the information for the machine. So this is the this is the web experience, and it's a good experience, a good place to go and 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 see how we can see this relationship of the documents uh, to each other. Um, all right, I think that's that's about as much time as I want to spend on uh, showing uh, how we uh, kind of look around the authoring application and how we get around the the data application. Let's get back into uh, into Fusion, and we're going to just start from scratch and work through the process of modeling this uh, this component. So let's go ahead and close down uh, all these tabs of different documents. I'm going to close out of all those documents, um, and then we're just going to go ahead and create a new document. Let me just uh, get them all closed. I might leave my drawing open just in case I need to reference some dimensions, but the rest of these documents I have, I have no need for. So to create a new document, it's going to be pretty simple, what you'd expect. Uh, we'll just create a new design. I'm going to go ahead and save this new design right away. And when I save it inside my Build-A-Plane folder, I've, I've created another new folder uh, just so that I can um, do it for the purpose of the video. So I'll just start this naming this one video. And the part number, I think, was F7123. It's pretty simple. Okay, so we've saved a new document. Let, let's start modeling this part. 